The last decades of the Cold War were a golden age for attack helicopter. Building upon everything learned from the previous generations of multi-role vehicles, the militaries of the US and the USSR strived for even better performance and capabilities, and they had access to new technologies that could give them exactly that. It was the 1980s when engineers worked on the Soviet Ka-50 and Mi-28, the Italian Mangusta, the South African Ruivolk, and of course, the French-German Eurocopter Tiger. Soviet generals were mostly interested in multi-role vehicles, while their Western counterparts primarily wanted to get new tools to reliably destroy enemy armor. Western generals reasonably feared the armored armada of the USSR and desperately sought ways to stop it before it could even approach the battlefield. Light vehicles that were already in service, such as Gazelle helicopters, were simply not up to that task. The development of the new helicopter was undertaken by Eurocopter, a joint venture between the French company Aerospatiale and the German company Messerschmitt Bulkov Blom. The Europeans resolved to create the vehicle with the latest technology they had access to. The new model was to be a low observable, highly maneuverable combat helicopter made from composite materials, capable of evading even the most modern anti aircraft missile systems. The development program began in 1984, but a couple of years later, it was suspended as officials started having second thoughts about spending millions of dollars needed to complete the project. Naturally, in the end, the needs of the military prevailed over the desire to save money, and work on the copter resumed, just in time for the end of the Cold War. Foreign counterparts of the Tiger, like the Russian Ka-50 and the Mi-28, were stuck in production hell. The Eurocopter also found itself in a kind of limbo. France and Germany started to ponder whether they actually needed the helicopter or not, and there were no foreign contracts for the Eurocopter in sight. After a few more years of refinement, serial production of the Tiger finally began, in the 2000s. All in all, just under 200 vehicles were made, instead of the planned 500, and the roster of customers changed as well. Spain and Australia also purchased the new model. However, all those long years of work clearly paid off. At the time of its adoption, the Tiger was, without a doubt, one of the best combat helicopters in the world, as the designers truly strove to achieve perfection in every aspect of its design. Computerized avionics significantly eased the workload on the crew, allowing them to focus on four or more targets simultaneously. The sturdy body of the aircraft could withstand a few hits from 23mm cannons, yet remained light thanks to the use of composite materials. Additionally, engineers used every trick in the book to reduce the helicopter's radar, infrared, and acoustic signatures to enhance its survivability. France, Germany, and clients abroad received custom variants of the Tiger, adapted to different requirements. For example, starting from the 1990s, the Germans wanted to create something more versatile than a simple flying tank destroyer. As a result, in addition to an expanded range of unguided rockets, Stinger anti-aircraft missiles, and HOT-3 anti-tank missiles, the German variant of the helicopter was also modified to carry the universal Trigat missile, also known as the PARS-3. This high-precision German fire-and-forget missile system can be used to destroy enemy armor and various fortifications at distances of up to 5 kilometers. The original French Tigers were known as Hélicoptères d'appui protection, while the upgraded versions were named Hélicoptères d'appui destruction. The latter are equipped with American Hellfire missiles as well as a 30mm automatic cannon for engaging infantry and light armored vehicles. Spain bought the attack modification, the HAD, Helicopter d'appui destruction, while Australia opted for the reconnaissance version. Apart from a number of modifications to meet their specific requirements, both countries expected to receive upgrade packages for the helicopter later, including new avionics and new, more advanced armaments. However, plans change with time. In the late 2010s, the Australians decided to retire their Tigers and replace them with the most modern model of the Apache. 
The military came to the conclusion that the maintenance and operation costs of the Tigers were significantly higher than those for the Apaches, not to mention the looming issue of obsolescence. Additionally, despite its lower cost, the American helicopter outperformed the European one in terms of its capabilities, making the choice rather obvious. Even in Europe, the operational service of the Tigers was far from trouble-free. There were numerous problems with the development and deployment of the German PARS-3 missiles, and maintaining the current fleet of helicopters proved to be way more expensive than anticipated. As a result, Germany cancelled plans for a comprehensive upgrade of the helicopters to the Mark III standard. The Bundeswehr plans to retire the Tigers in the next decade, while France intends to do so in approximately 20 years. Despite its complicated history, the Eurocopter Tiger attack helicopter remains a modern combat vehicle with significant capabilities. What do you think about them? Share your thoughts in the comments below.